Speaking as a brand new puppy owner, a mini Labradoodle, thanks. I know it's easy to obsess over your pets, making sure they have the perfect food, the best snow boots, and of course, lots of behind the ear scratches. But what happens when your love isn't enough? For overanxious, highly stressed pets, some pet owners say antidepressants could be the answer. Here's ABC's David Wright. At the end of her work day, Morgan hates to keep her partner waiting. Racing out the door, running to get the subway. It's not so much that he's jealous, he just misses her more than he should. There is a part of me that feels guilty just because I know that when he gets stressed, he is very distraught and it's, it's hard to watch. Unconditional love isn't always healthy. Morgan accepts that about Hachi, a puppy who suffers from a very real, very human disorder, separation anxiety. Hachi digs at the floor, and he digs at the door. He bites the molding, and this is really all in an effort to get out of the apartment. And like an anxious human, there's powerful medicine that can help. That's right, this melancholy mutt is on doggy antidepressants, a sort of Prozac for puppies. Hachi isn't alone. Nearly three million dogs in the U.S. are on anti-anxiety meds right now. Let's not even get into cats. The problem is that, just like with us, we often turn to the drugs as the first line of treating the problem, and I think that's the mistake. Researcher and writer Laurel Breitman, author of Animal Madness, says our pets have deeper emotional lives than most of us give them credit for. What sort of emotional complexity is there for a dog? I mean, we like to think that the dog is wagging his tail because he's happy to see you when you come home, when part of you suspects maybe it's just because he's hungry. Yeah, but, but we're like that too. You know, are we happy when we sit down in a restaurant uh, because we're about to eat or because we're with good friends? I think it's really safe to say that other animals, particularly dogs, can be happy and sad and anxious and fearful. In a world of pampered pooches, where's the line between compassionate concern and full-blown crazy. Oh, Fraser, it's so exciting. Look, Harvard. Illegally blonde Elle Woods was a bit too present for her dog. What do you see in front of me? You see a big blue ribbon. Or how about best in show? Go to the hotel and get busy, me! My name is Anne-Marie Rezor, and this is Albert Einstein Rezor. Yes, good dancing. For Anne-Marie, it's not about pampering her pooch. She's worried about Albert's mental health. When I take him for a walk, he's so nervous. He looks from right to left. His tail is down. Oh, yes, you can do it. He'll you just stop it. and freeze and it. just You're be like, trembling very, yeah, very yeah. strongly. I mean, it makes you want to be able to, you know, give him a drink or something. After a series of failed behavioral treatments, Albert was diagnosed with extreme anxiety. And the vet prescribed Prozac. I knew that Prozac really helped people. And I knew Albert really needed help. But that diagnosis wasn't cheap. Therapies and treatment costing upwards of $5,000. In fact, consumers nationwide are estimated to spend more than $7 billion on pet meds every year, more than ever before. Ready? OK, come on, let's go. Let's go. We joined Albert for a walk in nearby Central Park. Come on. Albert does now, he, he thinks we should be going home. He doesn't want to go away from home. Check out his body language. You see how his tail is down here? That's not a happy dog. And we're going to present him with our closed fist with a treat. Across town, Hachi is meeting with trainer Erica. Yes, he's like, oh, that's what you were looking for. OK. The Prozac gives him that extra little help to succeed, according to his owners. You still have to do the behavior modification. You still have to be extremely diligent and dedicated because the Prozac's not going to solve the problem. You'll see, he's just howling. Morgan and Jason show us Hachi in a full-blown panic attack. He's been alone for five hours. He's pacing, and now he's whining. So he's clearly he keeps stressed. Going and this video, watch as Hachi opens the refrigerator door. That's not half as bad as what he can get. And that's, you know, that's very stressful. We take it to Dr. Breitman. He's howling even while he has his head in the refrigerator. Poor thing. Heartbreaking, isn't it? Heartbreaking. It's so sad. He definitely has separation anxiety, and perhaps he could benefit from medicine. Prescription pad pet ownership isn't for everyone. I also adopted my dog 
through Best Friend. Sabi is a rescue dog from a war zone. I met him on assignment in Lebanon back in 2006. This dog was owned by a Saudi family who was here on vacation in Beirut when the war broke out. They left, gave the dog to the doorman, and the doorman just put him out on the street. Everybody's different, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't dream of giving my dog Prozac, and he's been through a war zone. Erica, the trainer, says it's not for everyone. This is a brain-altering medication, and that's a really scary thing. Do I want to alter my dog's brain? Yes, when it causes him so much fear and anxiety that he has to dig at a door and try to let himself out. I think that the medication is oftentimes a last-ditch effort before bringing a dog or a cat to the pound. And so if you use medication as a way of keeping an animal in a home, it's a fantastic final option. At least for now, the drugs are working for Hachi. It's tremendously helped. Prior to putting him on this medication, he could not be alone for more than two hours. Now the seven, eight hour mark. And Albert, while skittish, is finally able to make it around Central Park. Okay, all right. A spoonful of sugar. Good boy. And perhaps a dab of peanut butter, helping the medicine go down and helping the whole family relax. I'm David Wright for Nightline in New York.